Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is FCE CAE Use of English Getting Started. You might be wondering why I've decided to do FCE and CAE together, just like I did in the speaking. The answer is simple, because the use of English, they are exactly the same, except in the CAE exam, of course, the tasks are much more difficult. Without further ado, let's get started. So, how many parts are there? Well, the answer is simple, there are four. Now, the first part is called the multiple choice close. There is a piece of text, there are eight gaps, and you have multiple choice A, B, C, and D. And you need to choose the word which best fits each gap. They test things like phrasal verbs, uh, collocations, some basic expressions. Of course, in CAE, more complicated phrasal verbs and expressions, but especially collocations and, and context. Uh, you need to be quite analytical here. You really do need to know your vocab. But I'll explain that and how to do it in the individual videos for each part. Now let's have a look at part two. Part two is called the open close. Again, you have a piece of text, eight gaps, and you need to put in the sort of more grammatical words, like your auxiliaries, like am, are, is, was, were, have, has been, being, uh, so, uh, words like so, such, um, your relative pronouns, your words for contrast, like however, furthermore, um, while, whereas, although, articles, a lot of prepositions as well. So you really do need to know that. And again, I'll explain how to do that soon. Part three, um, this is the word transformation. As you'll see, you have a piece of text, and down the side of the text, there are words in black, sort of bold words. And you need to change the spelling of them. So you need to know about how to form adjectives, adverbs, etc., uh, etc. Et Think about all the possibilities. Uh, people sort of tend not to get all these correct because poor spelling. And the last one, part four, which most people hate, part four is called keyword transformation. As you can see, you have a number of questions, there are six, and you have like a kind of sentence, and then you have a word in bold underneath. That word in bold has to be used in your answer. So these uh, sentence that you give with the answer has to be as close in meaning as possible to the original sentence. And again, I'm going to show you how to do this a bit later. Um, it's quite difficult, but compared to the part ones, two, and three, where you only get one mark per answer, in part four, you get two marks per answer. So it's okay if you get a bit of it wrong because you can still get a mark if you get a part of it right. Now, that's basically the use of English. So you see what they look like, you know what sort of is expected, but again, in the other videos, I will explain in more detail exactly what you need to do and the strategies required. Now, how long is each part? Well, if you think that the use of English and reading are now combined in the FCE and CAE exam, in the FCE you have, if I'm not mistaken, 75 minutes, and the CAE you have 90, and in the CAE there are four reading parts and not three. So basically, in the FCE you have sort of 10 minutes, in the CAE you have 11 minutes to do each task, which really isn't much time. However, in practice, students tend to complete the use of English a lot quicker than that. It doesn't take so long, so you can dedicate more time to the reading texts, uh, especially in the CAE because part six is awful. I hate it, but it's in the exam. Now, success rate of the use of English. Um, in my classes and in my many years of experience, rarely do you get a student who answers all of them correctly. It does happen sometimes, but there will always be the odd mistake. Um, but enough, but some mistakes are okay even to get an A, so it's not so much of a problem. But of course we want to aim for the best. Um, you know, you really have to practice your English uh, extremely often, or to, as much as you can. What are the causes of failure? We need to understand that before we can understand how to prepare. The first cause of failure is a lack of attention to detail. That means that when you go into the exam and you attempt to do this task, some people's mind is somewhere up in the clouds. They're not able to focus. You need to be very analytical. And I'll explain how to do that in another video. The second cause is you don't have a strategy. You need to have some kind of strategy that you practice again and again and again and again. So the moment you go into that exam, you know exactly what to do. The worst thing you could possibly do is go into the exam and try something completely new because you're gonna waste your time, it's gonna take longer and you'll probably mess it up. And I'm gonna teach you some of my personal strategies that tend to work. The third one, and most important, not knowing your English. 
You simply haven't practiced enough. You do need to know your grammar and vocabulary, full stop. There's nothing more to say about that. So how do we prepare and what can we do to avoid those problems? Well, the first one, I've got reference books, uh, but especially in exam format. Now, here in my hand, I've got this book, uh, Murphy's, as we all know, is one of the most famous books in the world. Great for practice, it's got a lot of grammar in there, but the practice tends to be a bit easy. Um, and that's a sort of disadvantage with that. And the most important thing, it's not really in uh, exam format. However, one of my favorite books for FCE practice and even CAE is this one here. Um, I've actually spoken about it before. This is a fantastic book because again, explains all that vocab, all that grammar, and a lot of it is in the exam format. So when you're practicing that grammar, you're gonna practice it in the style of the FCE or CAE exam anyway. But again, the only problem with these kind of books is that the themes are isolated. That means that when you say, for example, learn conditionals or reported speech or modal verbs, you're tested just on conditionals, reported speech and modal verbs. The problem in the exam, you can be tested on anything all in one text. So you need to practice uh, basically doing real English. And I'll come back to the practice tests in a second. So when I talk about real English, I mean, watch your films, record your vocab, watch BBC News, read books. Oxford Bookworm is a great one to start off with because they are suited to particular levels. You really, really need to read and watch as much as you can to get that real English because you'll hear the same language again and again and again. It'll become instinctive and then your life in the exam will be so much easier. The problem is students don't do it enough. I suggest you watch a lot of my other videos on how to record vocab and all the other bits and pieces because then it's gonna really help you solve this problem. As a practice tests, do as many as you can. Um, now I've got this book here for CAE. This is called a trainer. And in the trainer, it has all the kind of practice tests. I think in this one, um, it's very generous. There are eight tests in here, and this is something that you need to buy. There are quite a few trainers out there, and you need to go through these again and again and again and again. Just keep practicing, and also don't forget to time yourself before you do the exam. You need to have good time management. But talking about time management, there's one thing you also need to bear in mind, you need to remember, is that even though you have 10 minutes per task, you need to give yourself time to transfer the answers to the answer sheet. I have known some students basically finish the test to go, right, now it's time to transfer the answers. You have 30 seconds left, oh shit. Um, that is going to be a very, very serious problem because you cannot transfer all those answers in 30 seconds. Now, that is basically a good way to uh, get introduced to the use of English. I'm going to go through each part individually and explain how to do it. Now, if that was useful, please give a thumbs up, please subscribe, tell your cats and dogs, anyone you know, and please leave your comments below and I'll, I'll happily answer because I try to answer as many people as I can. Thank you so much and I'll see you later.